The real story of global culinary tradition can be found in the kitchens of everyday women cooking for their families. So much so that I wrote a book about it, featuring grandmothers from different African countries sharing traditional recipes from their homeland. Now I want to share my take on some of these classic African dishes for you to enjoy. Welcome to Hawa at Home. Hi, I'm Hawa Hassan, and today I'm going to be making banana fritters for my cookbook in Baby's Kitchen. This recipe came to me through a grandmother in Madagascar. Banana fritters are really popular across the world, but especially in Madagascar, they are a street food that is desired and eaten daily. This is a snack that's often served to guests with coffee. And when one of the grandmothers talked about it, she just basically said, it's like, you know, it's like what nuts are to us. Um, it's just a snack that's eaten all over the all over their country, but it's also one that is served in variety of ways, whether it's you're a guest in someone's home or you're picking it up on the side of the road on the way to work. There isn't really, I'm not told that there's any um, cultural combinations behind it, uh, but I assume that it has to be from all of the influences that the country has had. What really makes it different from all of the banana fritters that are eaten across the world is that it's made with cassava flour. Cassava flour is grain-free, gluten-free, and nut-free. One of the biggest takeaways for me in the Mozambican chapter was cassava flour, which is something that I use now often in my cooking. It's a lot better than all-purpose flour because it's not processed. So I've got my oil heating to 375. So I'm going to get my batter ready now. I've got some water and some yeast. My water is about body temperature. Cassava flowers from the plant cassava. The reason why I like to use it is because it's gluten free. Let the yeast and water sit for a few minutes. Then we'll add our cassava flour and three tablespoons of sugar. This is a treat for me because Somali people really, really love bananas. We eat it with everything. I spent a ton of my childhood in Seattle being made fun of for eating Lunchables and bananas together. We just add it to all of our meals. We love sweet and savory. I love the argument of, you know, when to eat your banana. I like mine aged. I like mine on the sweeter side. And you want this to sit for about 30 minutes. You want it to be bubbly and nice. You'll know it's ready when it has that yeasty smell to it. This will help for a light, fluffy, crispy batter on our fritters. What I learned while doing this cookbook and doing research for the book was that banana fritters are a big part of street food culture. Um, you know, bananas are really cheap to buy, flour is really cheap to buy, oil is really cheap to buy, and so it's something that's eaten on the go often, kind of in the same way that in some other countries, tacos, like here in the US, you can find lots of tacos on the side of the road, so they're consumed kind of in that same way. So I'll cover this with a kitchen towel and let it sit for about 30 minutes. Once it's ready, we'll get our fritters going. Madagascar is a subcontinent island off the continent of Africa. It split off about 80 million, yeah, 80 million years ago and was left there to sit. It is said to have people who migrated from East Asia and then soon were joined by folks from the Arabian Peninsula, which is a fun fact. It is one of the five largest islands in the world. It is surrounded by Reunion Island uh, Comoros, which is also featured in the book. The foods of Madagascar include lots of coconut, um, lots of bananas, many different variations of bananas, and their cuisine is heavily influenced by Indian um, cooking. So about 90% of the plants and the animals found in, Maga in Madagascar cannot be found anywhere else. So there is more than lemurs and King Julius. <laughs> the French colonized Madagascar in the late 1800s. 
They did not give Madagascar back to the people of the country until 1960. But it took another 15 years for it to fully become um, a country of the people of Madagascar. So they're heavily influenced by French. So I've been letting my batter sit for 30 minutes. Let's have a look. Oh, that's perfect. It's yeasty, it's thick. It's gonna create a nice crispy fritter for us. So let me get started on our bananas. You want bananas that are sweet but firm to touch like this. So when you cut it, you get a clean cut. Yellow bananas are often a lot more sweeter, especially as they age, um, where the green bananas that are used in a lot of the cooking here in the book are, and in Africa, are, you know, they're harder. They're much more for cooking as opposed to enjoying on the side of your food or for a snack. Um, they are, the green bananas are just right before plantains, I would say. <laughs> and way before the yellow bananas. If they're too ripe, then they become a little mushy and cook. As a Somali person, I am, I think an obsession would be like, maybe what explains my love for bananas. This banana fritter recipe is really the basic banana, but also in the book, there are recipes for green bananas, and that you can find that in the in the Tanzania chapter. It's called matoke, so it's like banana with coconut milk and beef. My oil is ready. It's about 375. So as you can see, it's a very thin batter. The intention is just to coat the banana. And you could do this with vegetables as well, but this is how people in Madagascar do it. It makes for a perfect snack or an appetizer. So if your oil starts to cool down once you put the bananas in, just go ahead and turn it up. You want this between 365 and 375. All right, so you'll know when they're done because the bananas will float to the top and they'll have this nice, crisp, golden look to them. I'm gonna just take these guys to the side and then I'll continue with the rest of our batch. Traditionally in Madagascar, these are eaten with vanilla bean sauce, but today I'm just gonna make a little mango, a little papaya, and then I'm gonna just drizzle a little lime juice on them. It's a perfect snack. I'll have extra batter because I'm only making a few bananas for myself, but you can make as many as you want. Bananas are a fruit that are originally from West Africa. I don't know if a lot of people know that. It was introduced to the Americans by the Portuguese, so you have the Portuguese to thank. And, you know, it's, again, I think that a lot of people who eat bananas in the continent, especially along the Indian Ocean, really use it as a flavoring agent for their foods. You know, it adds just an extra layer of, um, of a flavor that isn't present in the dish that you've already cooked. And so again, like that layering of flavor and spice is what continues to show up along the Indian Ocean. And bananas really help to add to that narrative. Great, so my second batch is ready. I'm gonna go ahead and serve myself. I've got my papaya and my mango. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of powdered sugar on our fritters. A little lime. All right. The banana is creamy and sweet. The cassava flour is light and perfect. A great replacement for all-purpose flour. Remember, it's grain-free, gluten-free, nut-free. I'd love to see you make this recipe. It's a perfect snack. This is great.